we had much discussions on Gujarat model, Narendra Modi model, and what is the luck party model for India? Not the Gujarat model. <laughs> that is very clear. And, and Gujarat model, both in economics and society, Gujarat model is not a model worth emulating. The economic part of it, you look at it, what is the Gujarat model? It has the, Gujarat has the worst human development indices in the country. It ranks among the bottom six. And many of the others below Gujarat are the northeastern states, unfortunately. So, out of the major states, Gujarat is at the rock bottom. Malnutrition, longevity, on, on health, education, everything, it is at the bottom. I mean, many states uh, are much, much higher. Of course, Kerala is the <laughs> at the top of all this. So, the left model in Kerala is a much better model than the Gujarat model as far as the human development is concerned. But in terms of econom econ economy also, Gujarat model is a classic case where all the concessions have been given to the industry and particularly foreign and Indian big industry at the expense of the people. Land has been acquired cheaply from the Gujarat farmer and given to your big uh, corporates. One example will, will clarify the point, you know, the Tata nano factory, which they shifted from Bengal Singhu, which went to <laughs> Gujarat. The reason why this entire thing happened, it's now very clear that the Gujarat government provided concessions to the tune of 60,000 rupees per nano car. The car is supposed to be sold at 1 lakh rupees. 60,000 of the 1 lakh are concessions provided by the government. So that is why today the whole corporate media wants Modi because what he is doing in Gujarat they want him to do all over India so that they can make a killing in terms of profit generation but that will be at the expense of the quality of life of the people. So this is not the model. The model is the industry will expand in our country not through concessions but through the growth of the purchasing power of our people. The how could you do that? Today, if you stop this corruption on the one hand and if you stop giving tax concessions to the rich and the corporates, which for the last four years the government itself has admitted is more than 5 lakh crores of rupees per year. If that amount of legitimate tax is collected, and the government invests in building our infrastructure, our roads, our canals, irrigation channels. Thousands of lakhs of our youth will get new jobs. And once they start spending their salaries, the market grows, the demand grows, industry has to keep up with it. So therefore, new jobs will be created, etc. Everything will fall in place. So that is the, the R model. I mean, that is what I call an Indian model. So Modi talks of Gujarat model, we talk of an Indian model. Uh, while talking about Modi, many people are now saying like it's time to uh, think beyond Gujarat rights and focus on development. Uh, what do you think? I, but uh, that is too abstract a notion, focus on development for whom? Whom do you want the development for? You can have uh, an, an Ambani uh, having a 27 storey to personal uh, uh, house for three members of the family. That is also development. And you can have urban slums that spawn more than half of your cities and all your major metros. That is also development. <laughs> so what is development? So development means that at least are we in a position to provide the basic necessities for every Indian. If that is the basic necessities, you cannot think beyond Gujarat. If development means every Indian, irrespective of his religion, culture, caste, or language, or nationality, if every Indian has to have equal rights, then that cannot be, then you cannot forget the Gujarat one. So therefore, development means, what is, what do you mean by development? With the holistic development of Indian society, then Gujarat remains a very important lesson, that you cannot allow that to repeat in India.